Hi everyone uh, and welcome back to the channel. Um, this video in theory could kind of go into two playlists. As you can see I have a book in front of me which I do want to briefly mention uh, but this is also going to be um, the first video in uh, another kit design uh, series as well. Um, I've got the book out because obviously the prototype information is in this book. Um, but this is a, another book by Alan Keefe. Um, so we've looked at one of his uh, books before, looking at the first uh, 50 years of his company. Um, one of the things that I don't think I mentioned in that video is that at some point uh, during that 50 years, um, Alan Keefe Limited took on and bought up uh, the Motorrail um, Simplex locomotive brand. Um, so they actually built some of the final simplexes. They do uh, repair work and, and, and servicing and things of existing uh, existing locos. Um, and Alan has done a number of books um, looking at uh, simplex locomotives. So there's a there's a, a, a great picture book, um, simplex locomotives at work, which shows them uh, kind of all over the world. Um, actually features a photo, not that I took, but I helped Alan uh, find because it's one of the ones I used um, when researching uh, Blackerty Water and the bridge on the Grouse Shooting Railway, which appeared in a previous video. I'll stick a link somewhere here um, to the video. Um, so yeah, so but then this one is obviously when they bought the company, um, one of the things they got was all the archives that the company had, uh, which included copies of lots of the original uh, catalogues that Motorrail had put out over the years. Uh, so this book <clears throat> essentially is again photos, it's reproduction of one of the catalogues um, to start with, one of the earlier uh, catalogues. Uh, it's a lovely um, reproduction. In fact I think there's also in here somewhere um, photos, um, well part of the catalogue actually shows part of one of the other grouse shooting railways in Scotland. Um, you can tell I didn't plan this bit out in advance because I don't know which page it's on. Um, showing the train used at Dalmunzi, which is the other uh, Scottish grouse shooting line, and I have no idea where in the book it falls. We might come across it as we leave through. Anyway, um, it's a lovely, um, it's a lovely book. As I say, it starts off with this kind of older uh, catalogue, um, which is uh, yeah. Which, which shows kind of some of the early petrol stuff that they did um, interspersed as I say with kind of other photos um, showing other other bits and pieces uh, of the of the of the use of um, of simplex locomotives throughout the world um, all sorts of things going on um, you know wagons um, oh here we go um, passenger vehicles so both of these uh, from the um, Dalmondi Hotel um, grouse shooting line rather than the one on Ducal Moor, the other one that I researched in Scotland. So we've got a, a kind of semi-enclosed um, coach. Um, you, the, the sides are odd, they kind of bend out in the middle. Um, partly so that there's, there's four seats inside that can rotate, um, so they, they, they need enough space for the backs to swing around. Uh, and then a slightly more open uh, coach, these both now belong to Alan Keefe. Um, I think the company rather than the, the man himself, uh, and have been um, completely restored. They were in a terrible state. Um, if I can find photos that I've got permission to use, I'll, I'll put some up. Um, they'd been left, they'd, they'd basically stayed out the hotel after the line closed, um, but were in an absolutely terrible state. And Alan um, restored them um, during uh, lockdown as a kind of something to do uh, project. Um, yeah, so here you can see the. <clears throat> no, that's yeah. No, that's not quite the same one, is it? Um, but yeah. Anyway, so um, but what I'm interested in here is that this obviously goes on to deal with newer catalogues as well. So we get much more newer, much newer um, locomotives. Um, the the kind of slightly more normal simplex locomotives you might have seen, uh, kind of like the things that I've built uh, in 16 millimeter scale. Um, <clears throat> some really large wide ones and, and all sorts uh, but what's taking my fancy in this book is this tiny little uh, you know I like small small lookers is this tiny little G uh, series um, so here's a whole bunch of them um, in the works being built uh, and you can see that they had um, a cabless version uh, which again is something I quite like so you can see the cabs completely open um, trying to fit all the mechanical parts from model inner 
in a, in, a, in, a, in a small in a small space and keeping the cab open is something I really like the challenge of, as you know from the four millimeter scale Hudson Hunslow. Um, so what I fancied was a um, 009, so again four millimeter scale model of this. Now it's a tiny tiny little thing. I mean, there's a drawing here. Um, you can see they also did uh, a cabbed version. In fact, the only two I think that were used in the UK had cabs. All the others sent abroad were were cabless. And you can see there's there's slight differences between uh, this one uh, and the cabless ones. You can see here um, they are they are they are slightly different. Um, but what I have is drawings for essentially the uh, for kind of both. So um, you get the general shape of the local, but you've also got dotted in where the cab the cab would go. Um, but you can see that you know the the, the total length of this thing uh, from the end of the buffer, the buffing coupling block to the other end is what 180 no 1880 millimeters. So that's less than two meters uh, in length. So they're really quite tiny, um, and yeah, not much space. But my my plan was to see if I could do the cabless version and then obviously uh, a cab on top. Um, so we'll put the book away and I'll show you where I got. So again, this is another one of these projects that got started and then put away in a box and, and for, kind of forgotten about and I've just kind of rediscovered. So this is the box of my prototype work. So you can see there's a 20p for um, scale uh, for, photo, for photographing purposes, but let me tip this out and we'll show you what we've got. So, um, so yeah, I started, I think this was the the first body I did and what all I was aiming for here you can see there's not much of the actual body there's mostly just the chassis um, and there's not even things like the axle boxes there's just the the side frames but what I was aiming for was trying to work out if I could design this to be the right length and width and fit um, and motorize it um, so what I've actually picked up for the motorization is the same I used for the Allen Keith K12 uh, locos, which we've looked at. Uh, we've looked at before in one of the I'm fi I finished videos, and again I'll put a link somewhere here, -ish, hopefully. Um, and yeah, so this is a tiny little motorized bogey. It comes out of an N gauge tram by Cato, um, one of the Paw Tram or Centram units. In the tram itself, there are two of these. Uh, and they have the little control board for, for power and stuff. Um, in the K12, I used the control board because it was just easy, it all plugs and fits together. Um, I think in here, there's, 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 there's no way there's gonna be enough space for the control board, I don't think. So I will have to wire up a resistor as well because these things don't run on 12 volt, I think it's three volts. Um, as I said, the control board takes care of that, allowing you to run it on 12, but I'll have to, I'll have to deal with that. Um, but yeah, the, the 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 test was for this was basically to see if I could get this thing to fit, um, <clears throat> and it kind of does if I remember which way around this thing goes. So I think it goes in that way around. Um, I may have. Yeah, which way around does it go? It must go that way. I must have had it in at some point to have moved on from this model. But um, I don't want to promise it's it's fragile. I don't want to break it. Uh, there we go. <sighs> There we go. So you can see it's it's just about in. I don't want to don't want to force it, uh, but it fits lengthways. Has two little um, blocks underneath the the chassis. If I take this out again, um, so it's got two two pins here and here, which fit into these gaps by the side of where the pickups come up, which is exactly the same as how I held the chassis into the K12. Um, so that was that was okay, and then I went through a number of kind of um, revisions. Um, trying to work out um, exactly what I could and couldn't print. As you can see, this one's broken. Um, my original intention was to kind of print the frames. Uh, so these were all printed on my um, Anycubic Photon um, at home rather than the shapers or anything. But the idea was to print this kind of general shape uh, and then to add etched pieces. Um, so you can see I've got these little bits I've printed out are um, just paper templates, what I think the etch should look like. Um, the problem is on the on the real thing, the grill um, is really quite fine uh, and there's no way, um, I don't think I could even etch it properly. Um, so I'm gonna have to have a rethink about how I, I, how I represent the grill. I have some ideas, um, which I'll get to later. But you can see this one was a, this one was a bit more refined. So it has 
um, it has the axle boxes and uh, some tensioning stuff to do with them I think it's got sand boxes at front and back with the pipes um, it's got a, a bar at the back again which would have an etched frame in um, it's currently got a piece of paper stuck in it for the floor I've got a little seat printed um, as I said this one doesn't have a, a back um, to the to the open cab um, if I was doing an open cab then that would probably have a back a, a back on there so you kind of didn't fall out the back um, but <clears throat> again it does it does hold the the chassis so again I had to kind of file the cut the print and, and, and file the, the little motor buggy to within an inch of its life but um, it does fit so you can see the intention being that you would have these etched parts and I printed them in yellow because um, the only ones of these G series I've seen color photos of are all yellow um, so the idea you know that kind of sits on there we have a side panel um, I'm not gonna be able to hold all these in place really I don't think but you get a side panel a cab roof on it like that so the, that's kind of what the cabless one would look like and then there's a there's another etched piece that goes in this frame at the back um, yeah you're not gonna be able to see it all on the video probably hold it in place but you get the you get the general idea and then the the cab version obviously has a a taller cab but as I say I can't do the <clears throat> the I can't find anybody that sells an etch of the right type it's a it's an expanded um, etch so it's not woven <clears throat> the grill it's one of these kind of where they they essentially cut the metal and then pull so you get kind of diamond um, diamond shapes so I can draw it up as an etch I know exactly how to draw it but as I say I can't there's no way for the finest of the wire I get the spacing right and things like that um, <clears throat> so I'm in two minds about how to do that um, obviously I might have to increase the size of the wires and do less holes uh, which I possibly could do on an etch but having had problems with tiny etches and etching all the way through on weird shapes for the Hudson Hunslet the makers plate at the top was a pain um, we actually ended up doing kind of half etching with the intention that you'd kind of flood it, flood it with black paint to make it look like it was all the way through so I'm wondering whether I can do something similar either etched and just half etched through where the holes are which might hold it together I might even be able to print that having printed really tiny details on some of the works plates on the 16 millimeter scale um, stuff I'm wondering whether I can print some kind of sensible representation which if then painted black and then the mesh um, brushed in over the top might look all right um, so I think that I think that might be where I go but um, as you can see there's no way I'm gonna be able to get this I mean I can cut these two pins off like I did on the um, the K12 they're just for the lighting in the original tram but it, there is no orientation in which this fits um, so um, yeah it's gonna need a it's gonna need a resistor um, but yeah I'm, I'm thinking this is gonna be what I do as the continued design work for this um, as the next kind of um, design work project um, again I want one for me I want I'd like a cabless one and a cabbed one um, I don't know whether I'll turn them into into actual kits or not it will depend um, they used to be able to get hold of the trams really easily and relatively cheaply I mean buying them from direct from Japan that's not quite so straightforward anymore um, and they're a lot more expensive than they used to be um, so I don't know whether it's it's worthwhile but having said that um, I've currently got in production a batch of the K12s which use the same chassis so people obviously uh, are still happy to source the chassis um, but yeah so um, I think the next this will be the next design project the um, G series um, simplex locos um, obviously <laughs> Compared to the 24 horsepower Hudson Hunslet in 60 millimeter scale, this thing is ridiculously small. Um, but I, but you know, whereas the Hudson Hunslet requires multiple prints and completely, you know, is 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 very slightly beyond the size of which I can fit in the in the 3D printer. I can probably print like 10 of these in one go if they um, if they print, which will make um, production of more of them. Um, quite easy and straightforward 
Um, but yeah, so if you want to see um, work on such a tiny, tiny little proto prototype, uh, then subscribe, and obviously you won't miss the the any any further updates on on this build. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.